dark musings make you feel bad and angry. Oh, I don't like dark musings. Most people don't. But what they don't understand is that dark musings just may be our greatest source of energy and power. Thanks for waking up with us. Everybody, welcome back to Staying Focused for Jesus. Obviously, you have heard the news about Kobe Bryant. No surprise there. There are many videos, many posts, many um, things, whatever, that are being said in regards to his death. Um, what we're primarily going to focus on is we're going to focus on the scriptures. We're going to see what the scriptures say. We are going to address some things that... Kobe was involved in to get a better understanding of why I'm bringing these scriptures to light and bringing them into your remembrance, whether you have read them or not read them. We're not worried about speculating. We are concerned with what the word of God says for those of us who profess to be believers, which is why this video is titled something on the lines of the best biblical video about Kobe Bryant because we're going to keep it biblical based off his own words, his own testimony. But before we get to that, I want to go back in time, go back in history a little bit to give you a little backstory just from my perspective on all this because everybody's giving their perspective and what they're seeing and everything. So I want to do that before we get into what we're going to get into. So, March 10th, 2019 at 1224, I posted this. Let those who have ears to hear. Many believe that LeBron and the Lakers aren't making the playoffs because of injuries and many other things. This is surface stuff. You got to walk in the spirit. So walk in the spirit with me. Um, they aren't making the playoffs because LA has a completely different type of principality over it. We know the Bible talks about that. Book of Ephesians and many other places. This principality and spiritual wickedness in high places over L.A. requires a greater sacrifice. Now, when they, when they talk about markets, you have different markets, um, especially in sports. Certain athletes don't want to go to certain markets or certain teams because the market isn't good in regards to marketing themselves and what they can do in regards to who they are. Certain players that can go anywhere and they can capitalize off of that market. That's why Russell Westbrook was so successful in his market before he moved on because there was nobody in that market that was capitalizing off of it. It was him. And it's a whole you know, money-making thing. He makes his money. They make their money. Obviously, the owners and stuff like that, they make more money than what they are paying the players because people look at this and they say, oh, they're getting so many million dollars or whatever when... A lot of that money is on paper. Yes, they get a big and a good portion of that money. But think about this. If you own a company, are you going to pay your employees more than what you pay the company, what you pay yourself, if you are the CEO of the company? Obviously not. You're going to put more money into the company to build the company than you're going to pay your star asset of your company. I mean, that's just business one-on-one. Even if you... If you are a CEO, let's say Heaven Earth Services, it's my business, but I'm the CEO of it. I don't pay myself more than I pay the business. Now, it's still me, but when you're in the business world, you understand these things. So these people that own these uh, teams, which are corporations and stuff like that, 
you're saying, oh, they gave him a $50 million contract or a $100 million contract. That's nothing in comparison to how much they're going to make off of these players. And they know these things. So it's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that people don't understand. So it continues on and says, um, this principality in spiritual wickedness in high places over L.A. requires a greater sacrifice. This is also why the Lakers weren't making the playoffs the last few years when Kobe was there. Kobe knew he was on the way out and he wasn't doing the rituals anymore. Some of you know this. What y'all like to call the Mamba mentality. You might want to do some research into what it actually is. And this plays into um, the topic at hand. When the fans were chanting, we want Kobe, they weren't so much literally, literally asking for Kobe to come back. They were stating they want the Mamba mentality mentality they want lebron to take the next sacrifice that is required that it requires to receive the power from the principalities from the principality over la this is what you're dealing with so if you're not walking in the spirit you're not going to understand these things it's going to just fly off your head and you'll be like he's, he's reaching you're not going to understand these things open up your heart to what's being said And then you will see what's going on. Just as when the Romans had the gladiators, we want Kobe, is a cry for we want blood. We want you to take that next sacrifice and then we will bow down and worship you. And LeBron wants to be known as the what? The GOAT, the greatest of all time. That requires a greater sacrifice. Especially when um when Michael Jordan has held the title for so long, and even though Michael Jordan himself doesn't he considers he himself the greatest of his era. But if you ask to go listen to some of the stuff that Michael Jordan has said, he doesn't get into the whole, really the whole argument about greats. When he's actually sitting down talking, he uses it to his advantage for marketing because his name stays relevant. People go out and buy shoes and, you know, primarily black folks act like the fools that they are when they do stuff like that. Just keeping it real. It's good marketing. If I can continue to keep my name out there, Michael Jordan came around, came around a time where marketing and sports really merged and he was that athlete that was able to capitalize off of the opportunity. Now you can get into the argument about Mike and LeBron. You can get to the argument about uh, what Mike did before Scottie Pippen came there. I'm just keeping it real. Scottie Pippen was just as good as Michael Jordan, if not better. But Michael Jordan had a different type of mentality that gave him that edge because of the sacrifices that he did and the work ethic that he put he did put in. When you when you look at sports, you can learn a lot. The reason I like sports, not only because I like sports, but a lot of what's going on in sports ties directly into the spiritual. And people don't realize it. These athletes they put so much work into what they do, especially the what we call the greats. And I can respect that in itself. So sometimes I will I go and I watch these interviews with the Shaqs, the Colbys and stuff like that. Seeing where their mindset is at. Because I got I, I want to know my enemy. I want to know what's going on. I know how sports correlates with the spiritual world. I couldn't see that before, but now I see it. And when you actually listen to what they say, they say some very, very interesting things. So it continues on and says, in the regular world, they call it different markets, which is what I was just saying. The LA market, New York market, etc. These are cold words simply for spiritual entities that are over these regions and have power to give it to whom they choose. The Bible talks about that, obviously. Over Cleveland is, to keep it simple, a spirit of depression, anxiety, no hope, etc. LeBron, LeBron's destiny was already written. He wasn't willing to make the sacrifices and go through certain rituals because he deemed himself powerful enough to win a championship. You can go so far based off of your own will. You can go so far based off your own will, but once you reach a certain point, then you can't go no further. Now you have to step into that spiritual realm and you're introduced to the people and you're introduced to the things that are that are going on. Just like, let me give you an example, a scriptural example, right? 
when Nimrod was doing what he was doing, God came down and saw what the men and what they were doing, right? He said, nothing shall stop them for what they have imagined to do in their heart. Nothing shall stop them for what they have imagined to do, meaning that they were going to accomplish it. Nimrod got to a certain point, then he started dabbling in stuff he had no business dabbling in, dabbling in the dark arts and stuff like that. Um, he wasn't willing to make the sacrifices and go through certain rituals because he deemed him, he deemed himself powerful enough to win a championship. He then goes to Miami and he and he now has an understanding of how things operate because he was exposed to different people. Um, LeBron also has a Jewish. He goes. It's a video out there. It's, it's an old video. I think the guys on they're on a boat or something like that, and they're talking. They're talking about this guy. This guy's a Jewish like guru. He's like a go-to guy for the sports stars. But see, they ain't gonna tell you all this. So when people talk about that, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm making stuff up. They haven't even done any research. I can respect the person that has at least put the legwork in and done some real legit research. But you just spewing stuff out of your mouth and don't think nobody knows. I'm not going to respect you. I'm not going to respect you. You're not, you're not a formidable opponent. You're not even worth my time. If you've watched my other videos, you've seen where all these symbols of the Illuminati have come from. I will include a link at the end of this video that shows you exactly where all these symbols come from. It isn't often that you ever see a Talmudic rabbi in the news, and for good reason. Rabbis are the clergy never questioned in our media and are held up as pillars of virtue, even though they have run drugs and harvested and sold organs on the black market. This is never brought up in mainstream media. Why? Many people have made videos showing that LeBron James is Illuminati. A news article just surfaced that shows exactly what the primary spiritual foundation of the Illuminati, which should rather be called the Kabbalah hierarchy, based on Babylonian teachings. I show in videos like my Torah video exactly why the Babylonian Talmud is called the Babylonian Talmud, right from the Bible. I will include a link to this article in the information section of this video. This is a photo of LeBron James in a business meeting with Rabbi Yeshayahu Yosef Pinto, a man known around New York as the rabbi to the business stars. Sources involved with the meeting tell us LeBron had hired Rabbi Pinto for spiritual guidance for a big merchandising meeting that took place on a private yacht somewhere off the coast of New York. Rabbi Pinto, who speaks only Hebrew, has met with all sorts of business moguls in the past and is considered by some to be a spiritual guide who consults on business matters. Now think about this. This rabbi doesn't even speak English, and he is the spiritual advisor to LeBron James. We are told that LeBron paid in the neighborhood of six figures to get Rabbi Pinto to sit in on this meeting, in which LeBron heard presentations from several big-time retail execs. The article goes on to mention that NBA stars Shaquille O'Neal is learning Hebrew and Amare Stoudemire is meeting with rabbis in Israel. This article caught me by surprise. It is not often that the true power players of this world show their hand. So they had this, like I said, this Jewish guy. You know what I'm saying? Jewish, the ones with the, the hat and the little uh, thing, I forgot what it's called, with the hair that's coiled up like a serpent, but that's for a different, <laughs> different video why they do that. Um... And he was, like I said, he was his go-to guy for the sports stars and everything. And we know that the so-called Jews, they are into the Kabbalah and the Zohar and the, uh, you know, all the other stuff and everything. Big on um, new, um, numbers um, and rituals and stuff. So they lost to the Mavericks because he didn't pay, he didn't play by their rules. That allowed him to win the title before. 
once you enter into covenant with these entities, you must play by their rules. Many people in Hollywood have come out and said that. Melissa Ford, um, uh, the white guy, forgot when he was talking about that they were out to get him. We know they got, um, uh, what's the dude from the Fast and the Furious? Uh, that was uh, Tyree's be pretty much best friend. Y'all know what I'm talking about. They got him, took him out with a with a with a, a missile, a drone. Like, you know, when 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 is your time? Because you ain't playing by the rules. Then guess what? They gonna get you. Pat Riley and the likes know what's up. Pat Riley knew he had something great to cement his legacy even more and gain more power. Now, a lot of your coaches, especially a lot of the white coaches in the NBA, because the NBA was primarily consisted of white coaches, they are more so handlers. They they are the, they play the MK Ultra mind control part. They control the minds. Go listen to what Phil Jackson says. Phil Jackson, you can say, is you know a type of what we say what we say genius. Phil Jackson was able to get into a person's mind and plant those seeds to get them to do what he wanted them to do for him to be successful. They were just pretty much playing out his his plan. Phil Jackson was into some stuff too, the triangle offense. But hey, <laughs> nobody thinks about nothing like that. The triangle offense, the pyramid offense. That's what he's pretty much saying. So again, a lot of your coaches, uh, your Steve Kerr's, uh, Steve Kerr's is a is a handler. Um, Popovich, they they're all handlers, they're all handlers. Pat Riley knew he had. We read that he wanted to become LeBron James' handler, but LeBron wasn't having that. And some of you understand that because you know the backstory of what happened with Pat Riley and LeBron and in you know, Miami and everything, which is the real reason he left. When he goes back to Cleveland, he not only now has a talent he he not only has a talent he has always had but something different some spiritual enlightenment and power and you can see lebron doing his rituals i got videos i've done videos on lebron before so you may be wondering what does lebron have to do with any of this you should you should know if you have looked into this already but we'll get to it he plays by the rituals makes his sacrifices finally wins a uh finally wins cleveland a championship with the greatest NBA comeback ever that had never been done. Now the principalities over Cleveland had to get permission from their bosses to allow this. Because there's a order, there's a hierarchy. Again, walk with me in the spirit and you will understand these things. You'll see it clear as day. Because Cleveland has a certain type of principality, mostly a spirit of hopelessness. In the same way how the NFL got together to make a decision about Kaepernick, they also do these things. Let's also add this point. He loses to Golden to the Golden State Warriors, in which their coach is Steve Kerr, who played with Michael Jordan, who LeBron is chasing. You got to put these things together. They may seem irrelevant, but they're not irrelevant. There's no coincidences. There's no such thing as coincidences. Get that through your head. Get that through your spirit. Get that through your soul, your heart. Let us also add the Warriors, that the Warriors team was offensively, offensively, the best team ever. LeBron then leaves because he still doesn't want a handler. Dan Gilbert, in this case, and a few others, plus other things he is trying to do. Then enters the Lakers, who use Magic Johnson to use Magic to get LeBron to L.A. It was clear as day that the 76ers were the perfect fit for LeBron. Simmons at point, LeBron rotating between three and four position, while Joel at center in straight sharpshooters on the bench like come on it was cleveland it was cleveland who went up against the warriors on steroids everybody, everybody knows that that you know uh follows basketball it was that was the best place to go championship pretty much guaranteed but he doesn't want to submit his legacy that way because when you're striving for greatness you want the challenging you want the challenging role you want the challenging road. And those who are striving for greatness, you understand those things. Rather, you're striving for greatness physically or you're striving for greatness spiritually. You, you understand that. Though, those who are not striving for greatness and to be better, rather it is physically or spiritually, when those who are striving for greatness are tough in the... 
they they push and they challenge they those who can't handle it they 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 break under the pressure we saw that with um some of the people that Kobe took under his wings that he literally broke them because they could they couldn't handle it they thought they wanted to be great but then they didn't really want it so now that he is in LA everything seems to be falling apart why the principalities over LA require a greater sacrifice and greater rituals anybody that knows about this stuff you know that in LeBron's mind he is the greatest in which he has said it but he doesn't have the validation of the people so what God says to not trying to be a people pleaser the people to validate you as a God because the people are what lift you up to the status of God you may see yourself as a as a God but you need the people to support you as an idol so when you pass on your name forever lives on in the heart of the people because you're a idol in their heart your image is impressed into their heart in their temple in the holy of holies so they may have a picture if you are a sports fanatic you got a picture of the greats in your heart hanging up for kobe may be your number one you bound down to it may be michael jordan maybe it may be lebron but you still are paying homage to these gods look gods of basketball who have become gods in a sense in through the game of basketball that's that's the avenue they have chosen. So, in LeBron's mind, he is the greatest in which he has said it, but he doesn't have the validation of the people. When he went through the whole winning of the championship and, and having the greatest comeback ever, in his mind, that, that made him the greatest. He wasn't worried about what nobody else was, was saying and was thinking. Some of you remember that when he did the episode on um, the barbershop. And then, you know, they're kind of like roasting him. They didn't even really understand what he was saying. He was saying in his mind, you know, because he had been chasing Jordan for so long, he was settled within himself that what he had accomplished was great, which made him great in his own mind, comfortable in his own mind to, to say that. Not having, uh, seeking the validation of Michael Jordan anymore. He had reached that stats like, I don't necessarily need your validation because what I've accomplished is just as comparable to what you have done. Even if you got six championships. Look what I've done. With what I have been given. Um, the, he doesn't, But he doesn't have the validation of the people. The media. Nor the principalities. To be publicly labeled the greatest which he wants. We see that in scriptures. When we had Judas. Um, well G, the two G, Jesus. And you get the thief and everything. I think it was a thief. I can't remember right now. Was he a thief? Slip my mind. Um, and they were asking, who you want us to free? They chose the other Jesus. Then it continues on and says, if I'm not mistaken, I haven't seen LeBron go through his, go through his humiliation ritual. Magic Johnson did it with the AIDS. Somehow he still has it. But yeah, you get my point with that. Kobe Bryant did it with his rape case. Michael Jordan did it with his gambling and his father's death, which that's who he sacrificed, which was the sacrifice of somebody he loved, including sacrificing his marriage and obviously himself. LeBron will not win a championship in L.A. unless he plays by the rituals that the principalities over L.A. have set forth. Don't be surprised if you hear rumors about LeBron being a sodomite or having affairs with a man. And I posted some of those pictures with uh, LeBron looking real effeminate. Because you have to do that. He also will not win a championship in LA without going through his public humiliation ritual. Which could be which could be he being with the man and the knowledge getting leaked. Because that's usually what happens in LA. He will also not win a championship in LA without a greater sacrifice than what he has already given. Be on the lookout if somebody close to him mysteriously dies when did I post this March 10th 2019 at 12 24 so everything in here is true if you just have eyes to see and ears to hear be on the lookout if somebody close to him mysteriously dies 
I don't know if LeBron knows what more is required of him. Obviously, this was back then. He does now. But I'm pretty sure he has an idea. What will, what will not happen is somebody will come to him and let him know what is required of him next. He will either go through with it or not. Obviously, he has gone through with it. And I believe that the uh, whatever sacrifice he made, rather he sacrificed um, knowingly Kobe Bryant, whatever he sacrificed, the gods that are over him, they went ahead and they said, okay, we're going to, because of the sacrifice that you have, man, what you have done, we're going to sacrifice Kobe for you. Rather he he was in the know of how that was going to happen or whatever, the principalities over him, they did that. They allowed it for Kobe to, to, to be to be his sacrifice. Now, do I, do I believe LeBron knew? Yes, I do. I believe he's now, he's now settling in like, dang. Because you don't get to that level without playing by their, their rules and their game. And LeBron claims to be a Christian. Right. LeBron wants to be known as the greatest to whom much is given, much is required. Rather, that person serves God or Satan. If he doesn't go through with what they require of him next, his ego will forever be scarred. And they will make sure they remind him that he isn't the greatest in the overwhelming public eye every chance they get. Let me also add this. He may not go through with his required rituals right now, but could at a later time, which would move him into the top ranks he wants to be in. Now, let's go to the scriptures and see what the scriptures have to say about Kobe Bryant. Hold not thy peace, O God of my praise. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are open against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. They compass me about with all, they compass me about also with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. For my love they are my adversaries, but I give myself unto prayer, and they have rewarded me evil for good, and hatred for my love. Set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. Now, who was standing at Kobe Bryant's right hand? Satan was standing at Kobe Bryant's right hand because Kobe Bryant was a Luciferian. Plain and simple. I'm not going to go too deep into details after we go to the scriptures, but I am going to present some things before you. And if you want to go deeper with it, you can go deeper with it. If you can't see this man was a wicked man, then you got bigger issues. So the context is, you know, the wise king is calling out to God because his enemies are coming against him. He's, he's saying that I've loved them. I've done good to them. And they have fought against me and they have hated me without a cause wanting to kill me. Now, when you come against the people of God, it's context I want you to get. When you come against the people of God, then you are coming against God himself. So when you have false prophets that teach their form of the gospel, their gospel, not the gospel of the scriptures, their Jesus through basketball, through musing in the dark arts, when you step into that realm of literally being a false prophet and being lived up to the status of an idol, an icon, a, a God. Then God is going to judge you. You're still coming against God. So that's the context I want you to get. So we pick up in verse number seven. It says, when he shall be judged. This wicked man. That has Satan standing at his right hand. Satan is his strength. Let him be condemned. And let his prayer become sin. 
you see a person will read um the book of matthew where jesus says to not condemn that he didn't come to condemn and then they read that scripture and they'd be like oh why would he say something like that how do we reconcile those two scriptures do they contradict each other no because you're not having they don't contradict each other you just have to have an understanding of what jesus is talking about when he says uh, when he's speaking about condemnation to different things just like when he's talking about turning the other cheek um thou should not kill but he told them to go kill well which one is it verse number eight let his days be few and let another take his office keep that in mind some of you know what i'm referring to because you Follow me on my personal page. So you already know what I'm getting at with that. But just to give you some insight, LeBron took his office. Let his children be fatherless and his wife a widow. How many children did Kobe Bryant have? Are they not fatherless? Is his wife a widow right now? Let his children be continually vagabonds and beg. Let them seek their bread also out of their desolate places. And the context is talking about that. If you go read the other correlating scriptures, he's talking about a sp he's talking spiritually. Because there's other scriptures where it talks about the bread and how the rich, they have all this wealth and everything, but they're still never satisfied. They're forever hungry. They're forever continual vagabonds spiritually they're never satisfied no matter how much physical possessions that they have remember we're dealing with the spirit we're dealing with something spiritual so if you walk with me in the spirit walking with christ follow me as i follow christ then you will see these things you'll be like oh doesn't mean that god can't literally take that wealth away and you know she blow through it or whatever but on a deeper level understand what god is saying let the extortioner catch all that he hath, and let the strangers spoil his labor. That's what's going to happen. The strangers, they're going to come in now. They're going to make money off of uh, Kobe Bryant's death and everything. They're they going to spoil his labor. They're going to get rich off of what he established, the work that he put in. Granted, he didn't want, you know, he put the work in. Obviously, he made the sacrifice and everything, but he still did that. He still put that sacrifice. He made that sacrifice. He made that choice. So that was his labor. Let there be none to extend mercy unto him. Neither let there be any favor. Neither let there be any to favor his fatherless children. Let his, post, let his posterity be cut off. And in the generation following, let their name be blotted out. Let the inequity of his fathers be remembered with the Lord. And let not the sins of his mother be blotted out. Let them be let them be before the Lord continually, that he may be cut off. Excuse me. That he may cut off the memory of them from the earth. Y'all give me a second to get it together. Because that he remembered not to show mercy, but persecuted the poor and needy man, that he might even slay the broken in heart. Kobe Bryant, he, he had a foundation. He he looked out for people and stuff like that. You know, he was doing good things. Good works in yourself don't save you. As he loved cursing, cursing God on the, having his outward form of godliness. I do good things. I do this. I do that. Look at me. Trying to justify yourselves in the eyes of the Lord God Almighty. When inwardly you love cursing. So let it come unto him. Did it not come unto him? Died in a tragic helicopter crash with his eldest daughter. Who also he was training up to be a basketball star. With some other people on the plane. That's not a curse. His wife is now a widow. He died at 41. Which is pretty one, pretty one, pretty young. We say when we look at it, total in, in, in its totality. The rest of his children have lost their father. 
the head of their household and their sister in a tragic way. As he loved cursing, so let it come unto him. As he delighted not in blessing, so let it be far from him. True blessings come from the Lord Jesus Christ. Kobe Bryant did not delight in blessing. You have different blessings. Satan can give you a blessing. That girl you had your eye on. Mm, she got a big old booty. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Wouldn't mind getting up in that. That dude you had your eye on. Ooh, he smelled good. Ooh, -wee. he got that bald head, the beard. Mm, he got them waves. Oh, he got them dreads. Oh, he a good looking white brother. They get me a white brother in my life. The black brothers ain't talking about nothing. Then you get this gift, this blessing. <laughs> and now you're in it, it over your head. You think it's a blessing. Then you realize this is a curse. You get that chick. You got her and she crazes all outdoors. She crazier than a than a, a a wild a wild boar from Arkansas with the sins of Israel put upon it. As he clothed himself with cursing, like as with his garment, Kobe was clothed in cursing. He was clothed with the curse of Satan. He embellished the darkness. He embellished the 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 light that is in the darkness because there's light in darkness. The Bible talks about that. We have discussed that before. Maybe say, well, how can there be light and darkness? It's a, it's a form. Jesus talked about how if the darkness, if the darkness, if the light be, if the light that's in that person be dark, then how dark is that darkness that's in them? Paraphrasing, of course. As he clothed himself with cursing, like as with his garments, and there are many videos that have been done on Kobe Bryant before his death, exposing him. With his um, Illuminati rituals that he did with Nike and stuff like that. It's on you to do that research. I'm not going to do that in this video. I'm not going to do that in this video. We're going to keep it primarily scriptural. So let it come into his bowels like water and like oil into his bones. Let it be unto him as the garment which covereth him. And for a girdle wherewith he is gird girded. Continually, let this be the reward of mine adversaries from the Lord and of them that speak evil against my soul. Psalms 31 verse 18. Let the lying lips be put to silence, which speak grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. You see, you just reading that previous scripture, you're like, oh, that, that doesn't apply. It does apply. Just like this applies. He was speaking. He had lying lips. He was speaking grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. Kobe Bryant was a false prophet. He just happened to be in the realm of basketball. Basketball was an avenue for him to draw in the masses to worship him and to indoctrinate them into the uh, ways of Lucifer. To worship Lucifer as the light, as the Messiah. Psalms 55 verse 23. But thou, O God, shalt bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men should not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. Bloody and deceitful men should not live out half their days. Okay, you, you may be saying, well, that doesn't apply to him. Okay. Exodus 22, verse 24. And my wrath shall wax hot, and I will kill you with the sword. And your wives shall be widows and your children fatherless. Here is God speaking to Israel. 
telling them that because of their disobedience, that his wrath was going to wax hot and he was going to kill them with a sword. I find that interesting because, you know, somebody may say this is a stretch, but what's on the top of a helicopter? The big old sword. The propeller, the blades, they're, they're big swords. They're sharp. They have to be sharp to cut through the wind. And the wind is, is water. They cut through the water. God is telling them that I'm going to kill you with the sword for your disobedience. And I'm going to make your wives to be widows and your children to be fatherless. Now, let me ask you something. Two examples here. We know that the Hamites and we know the Israelites, they were they go hand in hand in the scriptures. We know that judgment first starts in the house of God. It first starts with Israel. And then everybody else is judged. Right? So if Kobe Bryant was a Israelite of the flesh, maybe he was. I haven't studied that deep into him in regards to that aspect. Then this would apply directly to him. Interesting. Then you look at Kobe's wife. Kobe would just... Everything that Kobe was doing was just kind of like completely rebellious. I think I forgot I forgot her name. Um, uh, no, he had a beautiful beautiful wife. But what what was she involved in? She she got blood on her hands too. So if he wasn't an Israelite, and he was still in disobedience to God's word, right? God was gracious to him, extending him grace to come into his mercy, come into the gospel. God still brought this curse upon him. Because the very thing that he loved, he took it from him. Psalms chapter 12, verse number 8. I would, I would more so make the argument that Kobe Bryant was most likely a Hebrew. Either way, we conclude that this was judgment. Psalms chapter 12, verse number 8. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. Now all the wicked coming out supporting. They walking on every side. Kobe was vile. He was spiritually vile. No, oh, man. Man, they're so, you, you, you couldn't do half the things that Kobe did. You give me the money, I would be able to do half the things that Kobe did. So what are you talking about? You sound like a fool. He has the money to do those things. And just because he has the money, you don't know what I've done in my lifetime. You're just going by what you see and what you hear. Because it's put into the public the public eye. How do you know? If, if we're going to go on that basis, how do you know that I haven't done as much as what Kobe has done? You, you, don't, you don't know what I've done. But if you give me that same amount of money, then guess what? I would be able to do half the stuff that Kobe did. <laughs> you, sound, you sound stupid. But this is what people will say. You ain't done half the stuff that Kobe done. How dare you? You will never, you'll never be able to measure up to him as a man. No, Kobe will never be able to measure up to me and the man that I am or any of my brothers and sisters in Christ because he's gone. He had his chance. So what you talking about? We measure up to Christ. And Kobe could never measure up to Christ. He had his chance. And for those of you who are listening to this video right now, you should get the point. That's why I'm driving it home. Like, man, he's he, he you being tough. Because it could be you. It could be you. You could be next. Opening your eyes, lifting your eyes, and he lifted his eyes, or she lifted her eyes up in hell. I don't care what you think about if hell is real or if hell is not real. You believe that hell ain't real? Are you willing to really put all your chips in and say that you all in? Psalms 
Psalms 75 verse number 10. All the horns of the wicked also will I cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Christ said that that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination to him. Was Kobe Bryant highly esteemed among men around the world? No matter if the person was black or white. Around the world, everywhere, people are crying. And, oh, Kobe. Deuteronomy 32, verse 39. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill. God kills? And I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So when God puts his eyes on you to do whatever he's going to do, it's going to be done. So if God got his eyes on you to take you out because of your continual rebellion, your continual blasphemy, your continual worship of the devil as God, then guess what? He going to take you out. He says, there is no God with me. I kill. Did the Illuminati kill Kobe Bryant? I've done videos on this before. We give too much credit to the devil. The devil did it. The Illuminati did it. No, God did it. Even if God allowed them to do it, God told them to go do it. Go do it. You're going to do what I tell you to do. Because this is what you want anyway. So who killed Kobe Bryant? God killed Kobe Bryant. Let's read it again. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. God can kill you and God can turn around and kill you and bring you up from the dead and make you alive again. God can kill you, cast you into hell, and then cast you into the lake of fire. We ain't playing no games. Too many people get on YouTube, they want to open up the Bible, they want to play a game, the Illuminati this, the Illuminati that, they want to give credit to the devil, they want to give all the credit and glory to these entities when something bad happens. But God himself says again, I kill. God himself says that shall there be evil in the city and the Lord hath not done it. God took Kobe Bryant out for his blasphemy. For his continual rejection against the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And anybody else that continues to blaspheme his name, blaspheme his spirit, blaspheme his word, he going to kill you too. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. This is what God is saying. This is the God we serve. If you don't like it, get the hell on. First Samuel chapter two, verse number six. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord killeth. Who killed Kobe? God killed Kobe. You see, a lot of you, you serve another God. You don't serve the God of the scriptures. You claim the God of the scriptures, but you don't truly serve him. You want to cherry pick what you want to about God and then do away with what you don't like. God said in his word out of his own mouth through the prophets that he will bring your, your, your greatest fears upon you. The very thing that you fear, he will bring it upon you and torment you with it. Second Chronicles chapter 14, verse number 12. So the Lord smote the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. So the Lord smote the Ethiopians. Who smote the Ethiopians? The Lord. Who kills? The Lord. Who raises from the dead? The Lord. Who took out Kobe? The Lord. 
Who gave Kobe grace? The Lord. Who allowed Kobe to establish the riches that he established? The Lord. Stop giving credit and glory to the devil. More specifically, stop giving glory to the devil. I'm sick and tired of seeing it. Because you don't want to address stuff like this because those type of scriptures right there make you uncomfortable. You got another God. You got another Jesus. The same Jesus that came and died on the cross, that shed his blood for us, is the same Jesus that's in the book of Revelation that's laying the smack down on this wicked world, on the wicked men of this world. It's the same Jesus. Coming back and slaughtering his enemy. The same Jesus that's in the book of Isaiah. That slaughtered his enemies so bad that his garments are stained with their blood. Who has tri who has who is this that coming from Basra with his garments stained with the blood of his enemies? God said, It is I. I have treaded the wine fat alone by myself. There's none with me. Meaning that I am God and I have done this myself. Obviously, those who come with him, we are one with him. But I ain't ready for that. He said he, he will he will wet. W-H-E-T. Wet. He swore with the blood of his enemies. Genesis chapter 6, verse 17. And behold, I, even I, who is speaking the Lord, bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. How did some of the stuff survive? He's telling you right there. And everything that is in the earth, he said, he called the earth the dry land. But who brought the flood of waters upon the earth, upon the dry land, just like he did in the pre-Adamic earth? A who destroyed all flesh, where is, is the breath of life from under, the, under heaven? Who did this? God Almighty did this. Almighty! Revelation chapter 2, verses 20 through 23. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and to, seduce, and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. I believe this is where it plays into his wife. Because they were a power couple. And behind closed doors, you always got a powerful woman. You always got a witch. Now, I believe if you dig, I know for a fact, you dig deep enough, she will be exposed to. Just like with Nipsey Hussle and um, Laura London. <clears throat> and I gave, <clears throat> excuse me, and I gave her space to repent of her fornication and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death. You embarrass me, Kobe. Speaking from the perspective of his wife. You embarrass me, Kobe, with this situation. But she knew what was up. She she ain't she ain't stupid. He goes out and buys her all this stuff and everything. You gotta play the game. And I will kill her children with death. Jezebel. You can't see the spirit of Jezebel and his wife now. I don't know what to tell you. Isaiah 48 verses 17 through 22. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Thy Redeemer. The Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God. Which teacheth thee to profit. Which leadeth thee. By the way that thou shouldest go. Oh, that thou hast hearkened to my commandments. Then had thy peace been as a river, 
and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Thy seed also had been as the sand, and the offspring of thy bowels like the gravel thereof. His name should not have been cut off, nor destroyed from before me. Of course, we know he's speaking in the context to Israel. Go ye forth of Babylon, flee ye, excuse me, flee ye from the Chaldeans. With a voice of the singing, declare ye, tell this, utter it even to the end of the earth. Say ye, the Lord hath redeemed his servant Jacob. And they thirsted not when he led them through the deserts. He caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them. He clayed the rock also and the waters gushed out. There is no peace saith the Lord unto the wicked. Rest in peace, Kobe. There is no peace saith the Lord unto the wicked. So if you are claiming to be a believer, I don't care if you're calling yourself a Christian or whatever, you you lay hold to the scriptures. You lay hold to the name of the Lord God Almighty, the Most High, Yeshua, Yeshia Hamashiach. However you want to say it, I ain't going to argue with you about that. You lay hold to the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Christ. And you're saying, rest in peace, Kobe. The Lord that you're claiming says there is no peace except the Lord, not Kelson King, unto the wicked. Kobe was a righteous man. Prove it. Prove that he was in he was in the Messiah. For those of you who don't want to use the term Jesus Christ, prove it. Prove that he laid hold to the gospel. Prove that he was born again. Prove that he was walking in righteousness, walking in the ways of the Lord that you're professing. Prove it. So unless you can prove it, there is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. So where is he right now? So why are you putting blessings upon a man that is wicked? You're bringing curses upon yourself, and that means that you're exposing yourself for who you really are. You're blessing a man that is cursed? Where God said there is no peace unto the wicked? What are you doing to yourself? What are you saying about yourself? What are you exposing that is within yourself? You are exposing yourself and showing that you really don't believe. I told you, this is going to be the... the Best biblical video you've ever heard in regards to Kobe Bryant. We bring in, we bring in, we bring in the 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 heat of the Lord today. The Spirit is here. Can you see him? Can you see what he's telling you? Can you see what he's showing you? Can you hear what he's telling you? Isaiah fifty-seven verse twenty-one. There is no peace, self. My God to the wicked. My God said there is no peace unto the wicked. So if my God said it, it is what it is. If you don't like it, then put your God up against my God. Bring all your gods. Bring them all. And put them up against my God. And we're going to see who's going to win. You like sports? Okay. We're going to see who's going to be the champion. Ain't no reason to argue about it. Get your squad. I'm going to get my squad. And let's take it to the court. Ain't nobody playing no games around here with y'all. Ain't nobody playing no games. There is no peace. Seth, my God, to the wicked. See, my God may not be your God. My God may very well not be your God. And that's fine. That's cool. If my God is not your God, then put your God up against my God. Bring all your gods. Bring all your giants. Bring all your seven footers. Bring all your Shaqs, your Kobe's, your LeBron's, your MJ's, Magic Johnson, your Jordans, your Isaiah Thompson's. 
your Derrick Rose, bring them all. Bring all your Hall of Famers, your Will Chamberlains, your Walt Frazier's, your Oscar Roberts, Robertsons. Bring them all. Bring all the Hall of Famers. And we're going to bring our squad of the unknowns. To who, 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 are, who, are they, who are they? <laughs> bring all your greats. Let's take it to the court. Let's take it to the field. Let's take it to the world. Oh, guess what? We already here. You see, when you walk in the spirit, they already know what's up. Those who are on that side of the of the of the of the of the of the, of the, of the, of the team, they already know what's up. So they're not offended by some of the things I'm saying. Okay, you got your, your Hall of Famers. They dropping the point. Boom, boom, boom. But we got our God. You got your gods. We got our gods. You got your MJ empowered by the spirit of Satan. You got your Kobe empowered by the spirit of Satan. We got our players inspired by the spirit of God who made your God. You may not agree with that. Listen. The game has to be played out. <laughs> they say it's four quarters, right? Four quarters, four, quad, four four quadrants, north, south, east, and west. Some of y'all know what I'm getting at. The game got to be played out. It has to be played out. So you can, you up by 20 right now, okay. You didn't got too comfortable. You up by 30, okay. The game ain't over yet. <laughs> you, you of all people should know that. Until that last buzzer sounds, it ain't over. Ask the Warriors. Job chapter 15 verses 20 through 24. The wicked man travaileth with pain all his days, and the number of years is hidden to the oppressor a dreadful sound is in his ears in prosperity the destroyer shall come upon him check my beard i'm gonna check my beard while i'm let, let, let that marinate in your soul in prosperity a dreadful sound is in his ears the sound of death in prosperity the destroyer shall come upon him. What what happens with majority of celebrities? They always die in physical prosperity, but they be so depressed and all these other things. Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, Kobe, so many others we can go down the list. He believeth not that he shall return out of darkness. And he is waited for of the sword. He wandereth abroad for bread, saying, Where is it? He knoweth, he knoweth that the day of darkness is ready at his hand. He believeth not that he shall return out of darkness. When he crossed that threshold and was indoctrinated into the Luciferian doctrine, Luciferian teaching, becoming a prophet of Satan, a mouthpiece, mouthpiece of Satan. He believed that there was no return, there was no hope. He completely rejected Christ. Christ could have pulled him out of that. Christ can pull you out of that. If there are any celebrities that are listening to this video and come across to have you come across it, you can return out of the darkness that you are currently in. But you know what you got to give up. I ain't got to tell you, you already know. You already know. But you don't want to. But you're too afraid. But the God that I serve is greater than your fear. Greater than the power you think that you have over you. Oh, I know. I know. I know you. I know what's going on. The very people around you don't even know how hard you know what's going on. That spirit, that fear you have over you. You're always walking on eggshells. You have no true peace, no true joy. 
I see you. I see you for who you are. I see you in the state that you're in. I see you trapped behind these, we're going to say fortresses. But we know what they really are. I see the darkness in your life. I see the darkness in your eyes. I see the desperation in your eyes as you as you cover it. And some of you, you have embraced it. Some of you have completely and fully embraced it. Some of you don't even know what you've got into and you think it's too late. He believeth not that he shall return out of darkness. And he is waited for of the sword. I'm gonna die if I if I if I do this. You're gonna die anyway. He wandereth abroad for bread. Spiritually, you're wandering for bread and you're not getting it. Saying, Where is it? He knoweth, he knoweth that the day of darkness is ready at his hand. You know you're gonna die. You know your time is coming. You know the power that be, the God of this world, is going to pull your card very soon. You live in fear of that. Trouble and anguish shall make him afraid. They shall prevail against him as a king ready to battle. Romans chapter 3 verses 10 through 18. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Kelson King ain't righteous. The new creature in Christ that I am, that is who is righteous in Christ. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are, they are all, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips. Mamba mentality. And we know the mind more so deals with the heart than it does with this. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And they in the way of peace they have not known. There's no fear of God before their eyes. I used to be that person. I used to fit into that category perfectly. No fear of God. Kobe Bryant didn't fear God. Isaiah chapter 3 verse number 11. Woe unto the wicked. It shall be ill with him. For the reward of his hands shall be given him. Job chapter 20 verses 3 through 8. I have heard the check of my reproach. And the spirit of my understanding causeth me to answer. And the spirit of my understanding causeth me to answer. You see, when you understand stuff in your spirit, it causes you to answer. Can't keep quiet on it. That's why you see me speak so much. I have a lot of understanding given to me by God. So I'm speaking the understanding because my spirit understands these things. Knowest thou not this of old, since man was placed upon earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment? He asks you this question. The triumphing of the wicked is short. And the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment. Though whew, it's it just so sweet to me, the word of God. Though his excellency mount up to the heavens. In context, he's speaking about the wicked, right? Kobe mounted up to the heavens and what he accomplished. He was literally in the heavens in his helicopter, right? And his head reached unto the clouds. Interesting. Yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. So he's pretty much saying that you up here, 
You're going to be brought down to the dome. They which have seen him shall say, where is he? They which have seen him shall say, where is he? Where is his greatness? Kobe Bryant's dead? Where is he? The great Kobe Bryant, like, this can't be true. He, he, he was, he was, he was a, a God among gods. He shall fly away as a dream. As they say, you can't make this stuff up. He shall fly away as a dream. This this can't be real. Kobe Bryant dead? His, his daughter was on the plane. This can't be real. He shall fly away as a dream. And some of you know about the cartoon out there. Prophesying his death. And shall not be found. He shall fly away as a dream and shall not be found. Yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. He's a memory now. Nothing but a memory. So, we cover the scriptures. My God, did we cover the scriptures. Now let's address some things that were that I said on Facebook. So I wasn't going to read this post, but I'm moved by the Spirit, led by the Spirit to read it because it applies to what we're talking about. January 18th, 11, 21 p.m. for those who are uh, listening along and not uh, watching it. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. So, Kobe was in the position that he was in because God allowed him to be a king in that realm of basketball. So, I continue and I say, you say you hate the God of the scriptures, the God of biblical Christianity. Before you knew what hate was and came into the world to hate him, he already stated that he hates you. If he loves them that loves him, then he hates them that hates him. God does not love everyone. So when he casts you into hell, you will know it's because he hates you because you hated him without a cause. You may very well be reading this post and God is looking down upon you saying, I hate them. I bet you won't hear that preached too often. Many of you God hates and one day, and excuse me, and on that day, he will say, Bring my enemies, workers of inequity, bind them hand and foot, and cast them into hell like a rotten pig carcass that the dogs wouldn't even eat. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't sugarcoat. I don't sugarcoat. So, God clearly said, I love them that love me. This whole notion about God loves everybody, that's not scriptural. I got a sermon on that if you want to go look it up. Speaking about that. So then we go to this post, which was 21 hours ago. And let's click on it. Only a few would truly get this because they know what I've been saying about what LeBron had to do to be successful in L.A. Just like Magic Johnson sacrificed his son. LeBron sacrificed for Kobe. Now, I thought that it was going to be his uh, his son because usually it's the, it's the, they give up the son. They usually give up the son. Magic Johnson sacrificed his son. You can go look at his son and see all the stuff he's doing. Um, ultimately, they sacrificed themselves. Um, Le uh, not LeBron, but um, Dwayne Wade, he sacrificed his son. We know what Le Dwayne Wade's son is into. And if you don't know, sodomy, you know, he tri tricking his son out, turned his son out. Usually, it's a sacrifice of the son or a family member. So that's why I said what I said before. That whatever LeBron sacrificed, how he did it, the principalities, they, in a way, they overruled him and let the sacrifice be Kobe. Kobe, because they were, not there were, but there are different aspects, different roots to the tree that are going on that go above and beyond LeBron paying his homage, paying his sacrifice to 
be exalted and go to the next level. Notice in his interviews, in LeBron's interviews, they kept asking him about his son, but he always kept avoiding him. Some of you know about this and some of you don't. They kept on asking him about his son. You, you got to put all this stuff together because it all plays a part into it. LeBron knows this. He knows it. He probably won't ever come out and admit it publicly, but he knows this. The questions were coded trigger words and statements asking him what he was going to do in regards to his sacrifice to go to the next level in L.A. That's how the MK Ultra and all these different things, that's how they operate. Right before his death, obviously Kobe, LeBron literally passes Kobe. Some of you know about this, you know, on the scoring list. And then the GOAT MJ comes into the mix and is asked questions about who's the greatest. Uh, I think we gave that scripture. Yeah. So I said, let's go to the uh, scriptures. Then we pick up right here. Everybody talks about Kobe's game, but how many people actually study Kobe outside of basketball, read his books, watch his films, etc. Kobe, out of his own mouth, tells you the stuff he was into and what the Black Mama was all about and him using. Kobe openly and boldly spoke against the God of the Bible, and God made his days few with another taking his office, LeBron James. That's why we go back up here. And let his prayer become sin. Let his days be few and let another take his office. Remember, God puts these people in position as he sees fit. Kobe was taken down. Now LeBron has taken his office in L.A. Are his children fatherless and his wife, now a widow, speaking obviously about Kobe Bryant? I could go deeper into why it was a helicopter crash, but folks aren't even comprehending what was just said. If God can take Kobe Bryant out like that, a God among men, yes, Kobe was literally a God in the flesh. Like I said, folks aren't ready for that conversation. Then what will he do to any of us that continue to spit in his face? You've been warned. Everyone will praise him, but somebody has to tell the truth regardless of feelings. So yes, Kobe was literally a God manifested in the flesh literally a tear literally a tear now if he was a um from the lineage of israel you can argue about that but he can still be a tear and still be from that lineage because look at judas iscariot so we go to the um the next post i did they crying and shocked over Kobe Bryant, but should be crying and shocked at not taking care of their kids. I would cry if I couldn't be a father to my children. They should be crying and shocked at majority of their partners being stuck in the same revolving cycle of death or the prison industrial complex. I'm saying that because majority of my audience on uh, Facebook is primarily what we call black. They should be crying and shocked when they realize they calling everyone else a whore when they prostitute themselves on Facebook or more concerned about making money than raising their children. Am I saying a person can't feel how they feel about Kobe? No. What I'm saying is a lot of y'all are hypocrites. I see people's Facebook posts and see the pure selfishness and disregard for life until someone dies. Then they want to act like they care. Your family member was trying to make amends with you before they died, but you wasn't hearing that. And now you are sentimental over Kobe Bryant with your fake self. Keep that mamba, highly poisonous African snake, because that's what a mamba is, mentality mentality away from here because we kill snakes by the spirit around these parts. Then we go to my next post. Today must be exposed to fake Christians day. Don't claim you're repping Christ, but afraid to stand by what the Bible teaches. Our God says Kobe Bryant is not resting in peace. Our God says there is no rest for the wicked. Our God says the wicked shall be turned into hell. Don't sit here and claim you're a Christian and dare speak against the very Bible and God you claim. How dare you pull a cowardly act, you traitor. Majority of folks don't take majority of Christians serious because majority of professing Christians are cowards. Either stand by the Bible or get the hell or get the hell out of the way before you get slaughtered, slaughtered like the coward you are. And then let me bring it up so we can read the rest of it. Like, dang, bro, you ain't got no sympathy for someone that, that just died. 
Should I as a believer? All you see is the flesh. While we see the spirit. Should I feel sorry for someone that dedicated their life to Lucifer. Spitting continuously on the grace of God. God said these people are natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed. Nah bro he didn't do that. What research have y'all done have y'all done besides YouTube highlights and buying a jersey or shoes? If you did, you would know that one thing Kobe said that made him great was that he studied his opponents, like really studied them. He studied more than their moves. He studied their lifestyle, the things they said, their weaknesses, goals, dreams, etc. So guess what? My God told me to be wise as serpents. Mambas. So I study my opponents also. How many of you bought his book and actually read it? What about researching Mamba Academy? Mamba mentality 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 <laughs> or musing where Kobe himself said that musing allowed him to harness the dark energy slash power which he used to fuel his greatness. Keep that in mind. What about during one all-star game? He was hit and started bleeding. A certain NBA player apologized, and Kobe looked at him. Looked at him. Looked. Kobe looked at him and said, "I love it." And the way that he said, he said, "I love it." That's what he said. It. And the NBA player, he said, when he when Kobe said that, he knew that Kobe was on a whole another level, a whole another level, because he harnessed that. He harnessed that dark energy any chance he got. I can't feel sorry for a false prophet that taught his gospel of Luciferianism through basketball. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. The world did not hate Kobe, and God did not choose him out of the world, because he was of the world, and the world loved his own. So, we have this post. This is the last one. Don't come this way if you haven't done any true research. research. <laughs> I don't just spit stuff out. I back it up. I said in my last post, today must be exposed to fake Christians day. Today must also be exposed to fake people day. Many of you spend your time watching mindless media and quickly spew mindlessness out of your mouths. Then I have a um, little writing. It says, most believe the oracles of Delphi was the, was the very first muse. While she was a muse, she was not the first. Greece, being a daughter of Egypt. Greece, being a daughter of Egypt got the idea from the upper Egyptians. Ancient Egyptian philosophers and pharaohs used temple virgins and priestesses as their muse. This came from the story of Osiris taking nine talented maidens with him on his travels. The nine maidens helped Osiris bring the art of civilization to the world. These nine maidens became nine goddesses and were adopted by the Greeks as the nine Muses. Tell me again how many muses did Osiris bring with him on his travels? Nine. How many people were killed with Osiris, I mean Kobe, as he was traveling? Do we know the significance of the number nine? So, I have this video right here. I'm going to play it. I'm going I'm I'm to play it right here. And if it sounds off, I'm going to put it after this. I'm going to put it after this if it doesn't play right. And hopefully they don't block it. That's why when I do regular videos where I'm just showing scriptures and stuff like that, I will upload those videos to YouTube. But the videos that have other clips and stuff, I don't upload those videos to YouTube. I link them to, you know, whatever link it is so you can watch it like that because I know they're most likely going to block it or whatever. So let's play it and see what Kobe Bryant has to say from his own mouth. Dark musings make you feel bad and angry. Uh, I don't like dark musings. So in this video, some of you may be familiar with this. He's talking about musing and you know, harnessing the power of the mu of of 
the muses. And we just read what the muses are. You can go deeper with that, or I can go deeper with it in another video. So we see what it deals with. We see what it deals with. You can go look the definition up, but that's surface stuff. It talks about, you know what I'm saying, being deep in thought and stuff like that. That's that's surface stuff. That's surface knowledge. He's talking about light musings and dark musings. So he clearly says that dark musings are things like bad and angry. The Bible says to be angry, but sin not. Right? Let's go back. Dark musings make you feel bad and angry. Dark musings make you feel bad and angry. I don't want to feel bad. So you see how they're associating bad with angry. The Bible don't say nothing about that you can't be angry. The Bible says, be ye angry, be angry and sin not. The newer version of the Bibles, the newer version, the perversions, that's why I don't fool with them. They take that out and they say that you can't be angry at all. So they're associating the two and saying that if you're angry, then you're in the wrong. They're associating bad with angry. So when you associate bad with angry, then what are you saying about God? Because we see all throughout the scriptures that God is angry. So if God is angry, then God is bad. You see? Now we know that nobody wants to be, well, I ain't going to say that. Nobody wants to be. Let me make sure I get it right. Majority of people don't want to be bad at first until they embrace the darkness, which is what Kobe did. So already we see what he's prophesying, what he's what his doctrine, his teaching, mixing bad with angry, and then talking about harnessing um, these dark musings. These dark musing musings, he says, they make you feel bad and angry. Let's continue forward. I don't like dark musings. Most people don't, but what they don't understand is that you say, okay, so you have his um, this is a little mamba. This is a serpent. This is a it's it's the alter ego. It's a piece of him. For those who don't who don't know that, it's a piece of him. That's he calls it the little mamba. So his little mamba, he would be the big mamba. He's dressed in all black. This one got the purple, got the uh, the yellow on. You know he's going to work construction. He's a builder. Cause we're supposed to be building in righteousness in Christ. Because if you go watch the video, you can go find us on YouTube. Um, he said, yeah, I'm ready to be. I'm ready. You know, it's under the little mamba, the little serpent, the little God, because the serpent deals with immortality. That's why we we, we discussed those videos before while I was talking about all this. What the, you know, digging deeper into the serpent and stuff like that. He wants to do the right thing. This is why he says, the little mamba, the little serpent, the little wise one, the wise, the wise one, the little God of the earth, the physical, when we come to this world, we want to do the right thing. We want to, we want to build. We want to have this crown on our head, you know what I'm saying, construction and stuff. And then he's purple, representing royalty. Then you have the big mamba, this one, the, the darkness, representing, representing in Kobe Bryant. Because that's who Kobe has become. He has embraced that. So he's get he for him to become who he became today, he had to influence the little mama, which is himself, to become who he became. Embracing the darkness, embracing the um the what what he says out of his own mouth, the feelings that the um dark musings bring bring up bring about. So let's continue on. Dark musings just may be our greatest source of energy and power. There you go. Dark musings, what well, he said, the bad, bad, um, the things that make you feel bad and angry, they may be the greatest source of our power. Not the light musings, but the dark musings, the bad stuff, the stuff that makes you feel bad. So if fornication makes you feel bad, then that's the greatest source of your power. If adultery makes you makes you feel bad, then that's the greatest source of your power. What whatever it is. You see, this is stuff that he believes. This is stuff that he himself harnesses. This had to deal with um, um, the best way I can put it, so you can understand, it, you can relate to it. It's like with with um, the movie Venom. I haven't seen the movie Venom, um, but you know how the the, the thing, the um, the virus or whatever, was speaking to him and saying, "You become one with me, then I'm gonna make you a god, a god, pretty much." 
that he embraced it. He became one with it to eventually, you know, I haven't seen the movie, but we, I know how it goes, took over him. Kobe Bryant is saying the same thing. This deals with uh, anti-matter and dark matter and all the stuff they're trying to harness and stuff like that. And we discussed that stuff before. You see, all that stuff comes hand in hand. You may think, oh man, this is irrelevant, man. You know, I don't, I don't need this or whatever. But I have to lay these videos out so when I'm discussing stuff like this, then you're like, oh, I get it and everything. Because I'm always going to come back full circle. I'm going to come I'm gonna come back full circle. And these things, they connect. They may not seem like they connect, but they connect purposely. So I have to plant those seeds. So when we talk about stuff like this, you're like, oh. And then you not only see this, but you start to see other stuff. Energy and power. <laughs> If you're looking for your inner beast, it's most likely living inside of a dark. If you're looking for your inner beast. If you're looking for your inner beast, it is if you're looking for your inner beast, it is most likely lying or waiting. The beast is already there. In your in the dark musings, in your dark musings. So you have to awaken the beast. That's awakening the darkness with, with, within you, taking it to a, a whole other level. So look how the little mamba reacts to what Kobe just said, the big mamba. The uh, you know, black mamba. Black mamba, the black snake, one of the hot, most highly venomous, venomous snakes of Africa in the world. He's dressed in all black. Come on now. You got the brown in the back. I can get into that, but I'm not going to get into that Got like six more seconds in this video. Let me let me uh, wrap this up. I don't know. I don't like feeling bad and angry, but see, the little mamba. We just discussed what the little little mamba pretty much represents. I don't know. He don't want to do it. Look how look how Kobe is playing the devil. He gave him a knowledge. He said, "Hey, what you do with it, what you do with it." He backs off like just like Satan did with Eve. Just like Satan did with Eve, look how Kobe is re is reacting. Let me go back a little bit. I like feeling bad and angry, but I do need to... Dark musings make you feel bad. Feeling bad and angry, but I do need to... Oh, it's only 30 seconds, my bad. So, when you see the rest of the video, Kobe is zoom. You see how it's zooming in on a little mamba, and it got Kobe on the side, and it's like... He's like fading off like, hey, what you do with it is what you do with it. He's influencing him with his subtlety. He's beguiling the little mamba. In, the, in, 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 the, in essence, understand what I'm saying? You, if you don't understand this, then don't just write it off because what I say, you're like, what? You're talking about little mamba. We are the little, the little mambas. The, the, little, the little serpents. The serpent deals with wisdom with knowledge, with immortality. I discussed that in a previous video. So if I say that, you're like, what are you talking about? What did we just read in the scriptures? There's none righteous. No, not one. We have asp. We have poison. We are like asp. Asp are a, form, a, a type of serpent, a type of snake. We take the wisdom that we, that we have, the wisdom that was supposed to be used in righteousness, and then we use it, it turns to poison. That's what a snake does. It takes what's, what's within them. The poison is formed within them. So understand what I'm saying when I'm when I'm talking about us being little mambas in a sense because he's represented, this guy right here is represented as a little mamba. Being innocent, the, the little gods. Because we were made to be little gods. Little wise ones. With the big god being over us, teaching us, and giving us the knowledge, the wisdom, and understanding in righteousness. We were made to be gods. Now, I know this, that's throwing some of you off. But let me define, as I have done before, what I believe the Bible teaches, what God has shown me through the Spirit, in regards to what a god is. A god, according to the scriptures, is a immortal being that has the knowledge of good and evil and rather chooses to do good 
to do righteous or to do evil. Adam and Eve, they were immortal, but they were not gods. They only had the knowledge of good. God was going to bring them to the status of a God, a immortal being, having the knowledge of good and evil through righteousness. These are the deeper mysteries and deeper things of the scriptures. So that's how the Bible defines a God. So when you hear me saying God and little God and stuff like that, I'm not talking about it from the perspective of the five percenters or the Hebrew, the black Hebrew is like camps and all that. I'm speaking about it from the perspective of the scriptures. A God is a immortal being that has the knowledge of good and evil. Adam and Eve did not have the knowledge of good and evil. They only had the knowledge of good. And they, and they choose, that God choose, chooses to do good, do righteousness, or do evil, do unrighteousness, be a worker of unrighteousness. If you don't know what evil is, then how can you, how can you necessarily do it? That's what Paul talks about. He said, before the commandment came, I was alive. But when the commandment came, it slew me because he had the knowledge of what evil was. So, when I'm, again, when I'm talking about the little mamba representing us, that little mamba, that's his little mamba, the little God, the little king of the earth, the physical, supposed to be rules over the earth, rules over our own domain in regards to what Christ had given us. But of course, we lost it. Now we get it back through Christ. So he went through the initiation into the Luciferian doctrine, Luciferian teaching that you could be. You could exalt this little God over God through Lucifer's knowledge, through the darkness, through embracing the dark side. This is what Kobe was into. Now I can go deeper into it, but hopefully you get the point. Hopefully you understood everything that I said. If not, you got to go back and watch the videos where I discuss this stuff. That's why I put these videos out because it leads up to stuff like this so that you can understand it. So when we go deeper in it, you're not like lost. I'm lost. I don't understand. He's speaking blasphemy and stuff like this. Even though I'm giving you the scripture, I'm lining everything up. Show, showing you through the spirit. Showing you what's going on. You want to fight high level demonic forces, but then you ain't willing to do the preparation that you need to fight them. And so then when you get out on the battlefield, we letting you out on the battlefield to fight these high principalities and uh, spiritual wickedness in high places. Then when you when you um you get out there we say okay, go ahead. And then you get beat up because you lost a battle. Then you want to come back and blame us. No, it don't work that way. Learn what you need to learn, and then you can fight these these uh these uh these higher level warriors of of the darkness. Because if you don't understand it, you're gonna be lost. They're gonna slaughter you. They they know they know who you are. They're like you're not even equipped to to fight this battle. So, um, yeah, yeah, I think the point has been made. God bless each and every one of you in Jesus Christ's name. As always, stay focused for Jesus. And as you know, truth is not debated. It is declared. We have definitely declared the truth through the spirit. <laughs> Thanks for waking up with us. Squeeze us so tight, get the last drop Till there's nothing left until we pass out Keeping us around to clean up the mess and take the garbage out But we'll be trash next Create catastrophes to speed up the process Depopulation, agenda progress News tell half-truths, hidden in plain sight They know we can Kool-Aid but gave us cyanide They know we don't see it, see it. They know They know you can't see it, see it. What they 
done to us Open your eyes Lemonade Don't drink the Kool-Aid It ain't safe for us We made it so sweetly So it will be easy To carry the plans out To lemonade oh. Lemonade Don't drink the Kool-Aid It ain't safe for us we made it too easy While we're busy sleeping They carry the plans out To lemonade oh. Voluntarily They hold us hostage Pay to receive Fabricated knowledge False education Standing ovation For my degree In indoctrination Georgia Godstones Plainly tell us That they plan To eliminate us Conspiracy theory We see no dilemma As they quietly Wipe our billions They know we don't see they know you can't see it They know What they done to us Taking us down Lemonade Don't drink the Kool-Aid It ain't safe for us they made it so sweetly So it will be easy To carry the plans out To lemonade us Like Geppetto, pulling the strings, master plan, dumb us all down, eat what they feed us, try not to think, carry on, nothing to see, as they continue with their killing spree, we wasting time on trivial things, and buy what they sell, even deceit.